हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फार्माकोलॉजी ऑफ प्लास्मा वॉल्यूम एक्सपैंडर्स नाउ प्लास्मा वॉल्यूम एक्सपैंडर्स आर द एजेंट्स दैट रिप्लेस बॉडी फ्लूइड्स दैट आर लॉस्ट फ्रॉम द बॉडी फॉर एग्जांपल ड्यूरिंग एक्सीडेंट्स सर्जरी ट्रॉमा एक्सेट्रा नाउ सिंस दीज एजेंट्स दे रीएस्टैब्लिश लॉस्ट प्लास्मा वॉल्यूम दे आर टर्म्ड एज प्लास्मा वॉल्यूम एक्सपैंडर्स so plasma volume expanders is a type of intravenous therapy where intravenous fluids are administered and these fluids they restore the uh, they restore or they reestablish the circulatory volume and these agents uh, they thus stabilize the hemodynamics that is they stabilize the circulation of blood in the body and thus they maintain uh, the tissue perfusion that means uh, the body tissues are again supplied with the blood now as i have just uh, discussed uh, that uh, these plasma volume expanders they replace body fluids that are lost due to for example uh, illness trauma surgery burns dehydration etc uh, now types of uh, plasma volume expanders plasma volume expanders are of two types crystalloids and colloids most commonly used crystalloids are normal saline and lactated ringer solution uh, colloids are of two types natural colloids and artificial colloids now natural colloids include uh, human albumin whereas artificial uh, colloids include uh, plasma volume expanders like dextran uh, polygeline and heta starch uh, now let's first talk about uh, uh, crystalloids Uh, crystalloid intravenous fluids include aqueous solutions containing small molecular weight solutes such as sodium chloride and glucose that are used to replace blood now since crystalloids uh, consist of uh, small molecular weight solutes they do not exert osmotic effect in vivo now crystalloids as desired they expand the intravascular volume and now these uh, plasma volume expanders they are cheap Uh, they are easy to use and they provide immediate resuscitation that is immediate revival now crystalloids are a first choice uh, for fluid resuscitation in hypovolemia hemorrhage sepsis and dehydration now other clinical applications of crystalloids are uh, crystalloids are used as solution for intravenous medication delivery Uh, crystalloids are, are the maintenance fluid in patients who cannot consume anything orally that is patients with limited or no enteral food now these crystalloids are also of significance in management of blood pressure uh, now crystalloids induce diuresis in poisoning and avoid toxin mediated end organ damage uh, crystalloid fluids are administered parenterally by a intravenous infusion uh however these uh, uh, plasma volume expanders they exhibit very short intravascular half life of 20 to 30 minutes now let's talk about uh, uh, types of crystalloids uh, now normal saline and lactated ringer solution uh, they are the commonly used uh, crystalloids uh, now let's first talk about the normal saline and uh, normal saline is an isotonic crystalloid solution a uh, normal saline is 0.9% weight by volume of sodium chloride now talking about the specific indications a uh, normal saline is commonly used uh, for fluid resuscitation that is to replenish a uh, lost body fluids and normal saline is an important maintenance uh, fluid therapy as it uh, restores the circulatory volume talking about the adverse effects if normal saline is administered in large quantities chloride ions are increased uh, within the blood and therefore uh, normal saline can cause hyperchloramic acidosis uh, now uh, next uh, crystalloid is the lactated ringer uh, solution it is also an isotonic uh, crystalloid solution it consists of sodium chloride sodium lactate potassium chloride and calcium chloride in water the specific indications are fluid resuscitation and maintenance fluid therapy talking about the adverse effects uh, lactated ringer can produce uh, lactic acidosis in patients with liver failure and it can also induce hyperglycemia so caution is required when uh, lactated 
uh, Ringer solution is administered in uh, diabetic patients. Now let's talk about the second type of uh, plasma volume expanders that is colloids. Uh, colloid intravenous fluids include high molecular weight substances like uh, human albumin, dextran that are used to replace blood. Now since these colloids they consist of high molecular weight substances, uh, they exert osmotic or oncotic pressure in vivo when they are infused. And since they consist of uh, high molecular weight substances and since they exert oncotic pressure, uh, colloids largely remain in intravascular compartment and they increase the intravascular volume. Colloids are more expensive compared to crystalloids and they are associated with more side effects like uh, volume overload, interference with blood grouping and cross matching, impairment of platelet aggregation and coagulation, allergic reactions and nephrotoxicity. Uh, these are administered parenterally via the intravenous infusion. Compared to crystalloids, they have a longer half-life and their dur duration of volume expansion is also more, uh, more than 6 hours. Now, as we have already discussed that there are two types of uh, uh, colloidal uh, intravenous fluids, uh, natural and the man-made. Now, let's talk about the human albumin. It is a colloidal intravenous fluid preparation that is uh, natural, um, that is uh, not man-made. So, it is uh, principally a natural colloid uh, derived from pooled human plasma. Now, albumin accounts to 80% of protein in plasma and uh, it exerts a high osmotic pressure and thus 100 ml of 20% human albumin preparation is the osmotic equivalent of about 800 ml of the whole blood. Then further 20% human albumin draws additional fluids from the tissues and thus intravascular volume is increased by 200 to 400% of the administered volume. It's long acting and as duration of volume expansion is uh, 16 to 24 hours. Uh, now talking about the specific indications of human albumin. It is useful in acute management of severe burns. Uh, then it is uh, very useful in fall in blood uh, albumin that is hypoalbuminemia following pancreatitis or liver cirrhosis as the albumin is synthesized in the liver. It is useful in acute liver injury as albumin is not synthesized in the liver because of the liver injury. Then uh, intravenous infusion of albumin uh, effectively treats edema resulting from diuretic resistant nephrotic syndrome. It is also useful in plasma pheresis where plasma is removed. Human albumin is the recommended exchange fluid and uh, human albumin does not interfere with the blood group or coagulation unlike the artificial uh, colloids and uh, uh, there is no risk of transmitting human uh, serum hepatitis uh, because the preparation is heat treated. Uh, however, the human albumin is associated with risk like uh, fluid overload, uh, allergic reaction and high cost. Now let's talk about the uh, dextran. Dextran is an artificial colloid. Uh, dextran is synthesized using bacterial enzyme dextran sucrase uh, from the bacterium Leuconostoc mesenteroids, which is grown in the sucrose medium. Dextrans are highly branched polysaccharide molecules. Now there are two types of dextran solutions. Uh, dextran 70 is a 6% solution with an average molecular weight of 70,000. Whereas dextran 40 is a 10% solution with an average molecular weight of 40,000. Now dextran solutions are primarily excreted by kidneys. The duration of volume expansion is for 6 to 12 hours. Now talking about the advantages, uh, dextran leads to 100 to 150% increase in the intravascular volume. And dextran 40 improves microcirculatory flow by decreasing the viscosity of blood that improves the circulation of blood. Talking about the disadvantages, uh, dextran can cause anaphylactic reaction. Now dextran reduces platelet aggregation and therefore it interferes with the clotting. Larger doses can cause bleeding complications. Dextran coats, uh, forms a coating over the RBCs 
and therefore it interferes with the ability to cross match blood now since the dextrin is primarily excreted by kidneys it can precipitate acute renal failure if renal damage pre exist uh, now let's talk about the uh, next uh, artificial colloid that is the heta starch uh, heta starch is uh, hydroxy ethyl starches in brief hes now uh, hydroxy ethyl starches are the derivatives of amylopectin and amylopectin is a highly branched compound of starch so heta starch is a complex mixture of uh, ethoxylated amylopectin of uh, various molecular sizes now average molecular weight is 4.5 Uh, lack uh, while molecular ranges between 10000 to 1 million now colloidal properties of 6% heta starch approximate uh, that is are similar to those of human albumin and volume expansion is also comparable uh, to 5% albumin uh, duration of volume expansion is between 8 to 12 hours and uh, it's cost effective as it is cheaper uh, than the human albumin Now, while the volume expansion is comparable to five percent albumin. Now, talking about the disadvantages, uh, hydroxy ethyl starch impairs coagulation and thus it increases the risk of bleeding. Heta starch is associated with higher risk of uh, anaphylactoid reactions uh, compared to human albumin and other synthetic uh, colloids. Uh, it is in, incompatible with many drugs and thus no injectable should be added uh, to its infusion and it impairs blood grouping and cross matching now uh, next artificial colloid is the polygeline it is a degraded gelatin polymer uh, it is a polypeptide with average molecular weight of 30000 uh, it exerts oncotic pressure similar to human albumin uh, it is excreted slowly by the kidneys now expansion of uh, plasma volume lasts for about 12 hours now it's cheaper compared to human albumin and other synthetic colloids uh, talking about the disadvantages uh, there is higher incidences of uh, uh, anaphylactoid reactions compared to human albumin polygeline also causes impairment of uh, coagulation and uh, 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 these gelatins uh, they can cause circulatory disturbances uh, by increasing the plasma renin activity now since the use of colloids especially the artificial colloids is associated with life threatening risks like uh, anaphylactoid reaction excessive bleeding impairment of blood grouping and cross matching uh, colloids should be used with caution only under the guidance of a specialist Uh, so this is all about the pharmacology of plasma volume expanders now if you find the video helpful kindly like subscribe and share this video uh, thanks for watching the video